Coffee is delicious. Butter is delicious. But just because two things are delicious does not mean they should be combined. Likewise, just because two things are perceived as healthy does not mean they should necessarily be combined or consumed in large quantities. And of course, that brings me to bulletproof coffee. And in this video, I'm looking at four reasons why it's actually really bad for you. In case you don't know what it is, bulletproof coffee is basically coffee with at least a tablespoon of grass-fed unsalted butter mixed in. Now the original recipe calls for one to two tablespoons of a type of oil called MCT oil to be added in as well as the butter. In fact, your coffee is supposed to be brewed from so-called toxin-free upgraded coffee beans that are sold by the Bulletproof brand. Uh, but that's just uh, another rabbit hole that we don't wanna get stuck down in today. All right, so the first reason Bulletproof coffee is bad is because it provides massive concentrated amounts of saturated fat on a regular basis. Now, current evidence does show that saturated fat intake is not actually a risk factor for heart disease when consumed in normal quantities. Keep in mind that all of the large population studies available looked at people using normal amounts. That is everyday ordinary amounts like adding butter on toast or uh, with scrambled eggs. Now, people were never pouring large amounts of saturated fat into their coffee. They were simply eating it along with other foods. Now, for those who subscribe to the ancestral nutrition approach, humans did not evolve eating or drinking such massive amounts of saturated fat. We were eating it as part of meals, not as the meal. There are plenty of nutrients that are healthy when consumed in reasonable amounts, but when people start mega dosing them and eating those nutrients in isolation, uh, it can cause serious problems. Fructose is the really obvious example. Now it's good when found in nutritious, fibrous, whole fruit, okay? But it's a disaster when consumed in concentrated amounts from refined sugar like you'd get uh, in soft drinks. It's entirely possible that saturated fat is the same. Fine in reasonable amounts, but harmful when we start eating unnaturally large concentrated doses that are just way outside of our evolutionary norms. Number two, the fat in butter is much more dangerous than fat from other dairy food sources. Saturated fat aside, there is another glaring problem with consuming large quantities of butter, and that is that it does not contain uh, what's called milk fat globule membrane or MFGM. MFGM is a protective membrane that encloses the fatty acids found in high fat dairy products, um, such as cream, which in turn seems to reduce the cholesterol raising effects of its fatty acids. Now butter is just cream that has been churned and the churning process destroys much of this membrane. Um, the result is that butter can increase the amount of LDL particles in your bloodstream, which are a strong predictor of heart disease. Okay, so how do we know that this is indeed fact, that uh, dairy fat from butter increases heart disease risk factors more than dairy fat from, from other products like cream? There's actually been a lot of studies on the topic. Uh, this recent Swedish trial randomly assigned 57 overweight men and women to consume either 40 grams of milk fat as whipped cream per day, or 40 grams as butter um, for an eight week period. They found the LDL particle number of the butter group shot up significantly more than the cream group. As you can see by this graph, it clearly shows that butter on the, on the right uh, increased the levels of blood cholesterol, whereas cream did not. Now there are also significant increases to total cholesterol, um, ApoB levels, and non-HDL cholesterol compared to the cream group. Several other randomized controlled trials also show that eating butter fat has worse effects on the blood lipid profile than other sources of dairy fat with an intact MFGM, uh, such as cream or cheese. For this reason alone, you should make sure that your butter consumption is not excessive. And step one is to not put it in your coffee. Number three, there have been some case reports of dramatically elevated cholesterol due to bulletproof coffee. In case you're still not convinced, many people's heart health markers are spiking dramatically when they start to drink bulletproof coffee. There have been a lot of reports from health professionals, even those that advocate a low carb, high fat or paleo approach, that they've had patients with drastically elevated cholesterol levels after drinking bulletproof coffee. Keep in mind that these changes go way beyond total and LDL cholesterol, which are not the most accurate as risk factors. Um, we're seeing increases in ApoB and LDL particle number, which are much stronger and more accurate risk factors. Now, although these numbers are still just risk factors, given how strong their predictive value is for heart disease, I think this is a legitimate concern. Fortunately, case studies indicate that uh, in those who do experience those large spikes in cholesterol levels, uh, when they stop drinking bulletproof coffee, uh, the levels come down quite quickly. Number four, you are displacing a highly nutritious meal with something that is low in essential nutrients. 
Shifting gears a little bit, but let's have a look at what you miss out on by drinking Bulletproof coffee, because it is typically recommended um, to have it in the morning in place of breakfast, which makes sense because a standard Bulletproof coffee is over 450 calories and 50 grams of fat, which is a meal in itself. The problem is it's essentially just fat and tiny trace amounts of other nutrients from the butter. Uh, that's it. If you already eat a nutritious breakfast, the obvious downside here is that Bulletproof coffee only replaces the calories and fat, but provides nothing else. Now, for example, eating two eggs for breakfast has 12 grams of protein and around 20% of the RDA for selenium, phosphorus, vitamin B12, vitamin B2, vitamin B5, and even some minerals. Uh, you know, Meanwhile, Bulletproof coffee has little to no micronutrients and no protein. So if you're used to eating three meals per day, then replacing breakfast with a Bulletproof coffee could potentially reduce the total nutrient load of your diet by a third. Look, ultimately, it's best to proceed with caution when uh, adopting a drastic dietary change that has never been tested and is, is way outside of our evolutionary norms. It's better to be safe than sorry. If you found this video useful, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the Authority Nutrition YouTube channel by clicking the uh, big red subscribe button below this video and then you can catch all our new videos as they come out.